error. So interested to see if they can time up Sofia De Pasquale in the circle a little bit better than they could Canada last night. Chelsea Lovaton, the catcher, starts off against Sofia De Pasquale. And De Pasquale will throw a fastball very similar to Pahotal on the other side. And that is the one pitch that she throws. We'll also mix in a change up here and there, but both of these, all the pitch, or both pitching staffs on both sides are going back to that foundational mechanics, trying to throw a fastball, working a change up here and there before you move on to a lot of other movement pitches, one thing at a time, mastery of one pitch and the reps of it. Chelsea Lobato and quickly became one of our you know, most intriguing players to watch. You already talked a little bit about her when she's catching behind the plate, how active she is, how she'll stand up. She'll go ahead and take her base here on the free pass. This is a Philippines team that doesn't hit for a lot of power. Small ball and speed is definitely more their name of the game on offense. And so a good walk right there for Lobato to start things off. Look for somebody like Matarong who's up right now potentially lay down a bunt, a sneaky bunt. Well, right now, she's moving all the way in the back of the box. Audrey is so tiny, guys. Wow. Runner going. They're not afraid to steal. And that's why Audrey got all the way in the back of the box to make it harder for Mancini, the catcher, make it a further throw. So she went all the way in the back of the box, and now she's not gonna be as far back, although I will tell you what, she is right on top of the plate, crowding the plate. Usually you see a hitter be in the front of the box in a bunt situation so that you can catch it out in front and there's less room for air in terms of the bunt hitting the plate, and bouncing foul, or just not catching it out in front, not having as good of angles with your barrel to lay the bunt down. She's gonna move up now a little bit. We'll see if she decides to square around again. And she does go with the bunt. The throw is low, so Audrey will be safe. Run is coming across for the Philippines. Using that small ball. So similar to how they scored in the first inning in last night's game against Canada. Except it was Blancha who scored, but she walked, then stole a base, and then there was an error, and she scored last night. The same thing happens today. Philippines scores first, and the teams that have scored first in this tournament have had a lot. Oh, man, and here comes the pitcher, J.C. Pohotal, up with the bases loaded and no outs. Remember, the Philippines only had two hits yesterday and they've had three in a row now. Two in a row, excuse me, two in a row. I got excited. JC Pahotal, her favorite player, Michelle Smith. We know her, we know her, we really do. She'll be here Friday. She's bringing you a sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy in this 100 degree weather. Yeah, well, a <laughs> little cold in the booth, not gonna lie. Matarong at third, Blancha at second, and Valenzuela at first right now for the Philippines. Sofia De Pasquale trying to stay composed in the circle. Two one count here. <laughs> JC right back to the pitcher. They'll get the force out at home, but base is still loaded. 
just an important out though to be able to get that first out of the inning, especially when there is a lot of chaos going on earlier in the inning and Dave Pasquale knows exactly what she wants to do with it. Is he out at home? Next up, Ann Manalo to face De Pasquale. Oh, gets underneath that ball. Puts it way high up in the air, and Martina Fentinati is there. The run comes across. Fentinati played that ball really well yeah. because if that would have gotten over her head, the base is likely would have cleared and the Philippines would have scored three, maybe even four with an in the park home run. Manalo, definitely the most power that we have seen off the bat of a Philippines hitter. Fentinati being able to track that down, but Philippines puts another run on the board. Now up 2-0. Uh, Keisha had those sunnies on because it is bright out there. Princess Ablig up 2-1. Ablig had a hit last night. She was one for one. Think about it too, it has to be so hard for the Philippines to enter in this game and know that your manager you have a lot of comfort with, you practice with him all the time, he coached them last night and a couple of other games this summer, isn't there with you on the field, in the dugout, talking to you in between innings, and Ryan Blanca now at third base, as a third base coach stepping in for his role, but it just is a little different when somebody is missing, whether that's a player or a coach, when just something is missing, things feel a little bit off. The Philippines have been able to respond, and respond big. And there you see Ryan over in the third base coach's box. Taught himself softball, did not play growing up, but watched YouTube videos and just loves the sport and loves coaching these girls. It was a lot of fun to talk with. Passion for the sport, even though he did not play. And the free pass issued to Princess Ablig, so that loads the bases. Philippines just has such a good game plan going on right now offensively. Being able to execute, take their walks when they're given to them, seeing some more power in their swings. I mean, Philippines just really has it going on early in this tournament. Angela Esperida. The number eight hitter. Favorite movie, Doctor Strange? They had a lot of that. I like the Marvel movies too. That's, that's your jam. Benedict Cumberbatch? Not my lingo. Yep. I got you. <laughs> it's so boring, I think, besides that's not softball. True. <laughs> no. <laughs> just because we haven't shown you a dog yet here. <laughs> <laughs> Always on the lookout, though. Ball three. So important for Sofia de Desquale to challenge Esperita right now. And I mean challenge her, I mean throw it right down Broadway. Make her put the ball in play or make a decision if she wants to swing. Likely she's going to take this pitch regardless. And even better reason to throw a strike because it gets you back into the count. You're also dealing with a smaller strike zone. The Philippines team, top to bottom on average, has the shortest players out of any team in this tournament. Finding the bottom of the strike zone to get right back into the count. Strikeout for 
Sophia. Runner up with the bases loaded, but not before the Philippines scores twice. Well, she did get it. It, it has a different feel to it when you've already been out here on this field, played in front of the cameras and in front in this beautiful stadium, in front of fans and with more added pressure. So you can tell that they're comfortable coming to the game today. And Italy likely have, having some nerves right now. They're trying to knock off. Well, Martina Fantinati, who made the great catch out in center field. She's going to lead off this inning for Italy. You can tell the communication, too, with the Philippines' defense. After every strike, they let each other know, okay, one strike. Like, immediately after the strike, the infield turns to the outfield, raises up a finger. Don't do it for the balls, but they get really excited yeah. <laughs> about every single strike. And it's not just telling each other how many outs there are. It's also reminding how many strikes there are. This defense plays with a lot of passion. They're constantly moving, constantly staying on their toes, communicating to each other. All the good qualities that make a complete defense on the infield and outfield. Big cut coming from Fenton. There, <laughs> there it is. There it is. That's two. <laughs> and they tell everybody. I just saw the first baseman, Manalo, look to the stands, too, and remind yeah. them that there's two strikes. That'll help me do my job. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember, too, if you were with us last night, you heard us tell this story, but the Philippines, they go to school for softball, so they leave their families, um, and they go to this special school. They practice two times a day at 5 a.m. and at 2 p.m., so they really work on those fundamentals. <laughs> Boom! JC! Three strikeouts in a row now for JC Pahotal, moving that ball up in the zone. I love the way, love, love, love the way that Low Baton works with Pahotal. They are such a strong battery. They make the rest of this team go. Three strikeouts in a row for JC Pahotal, and now she faces Georgia Frascaroli. tell that this is a team that practices a lot Courtney you can tell that they are dedicated you can tell that they're dedicated not only putting the time but focusing on all the small things in every aspect of the game it goes back to those small fundamental details that most people want to skip past they want to move forward just like throwing a fastball and a curve rise drop through drop curve and having eight different pitches you don't need that you need to be able to focus on one thing at a time, master it before you move on, because it's only going to help you in the long run. Everybody wants results in all the things right now. Really, you can do little things right now to set yourself up for success later, and that's what this Philippines team does with how much they work on their fundamentals. And it's paying off here on a very big stage. 2-2 Two -two count to Frascaroli. Make it four Ks in a row for JC Pahotal. I mean, she's just working all parts of the zone. Her first strikeout of the inning was with her rise ball. And then the next strikeout is more low in the zone with their drop, even though Low Baton wanted that pitch up. Still got a swing and miss with it being down, and I called it a drop because it did drop. But she's just out there trying to throw a fastball and locate it in all the different quadrants, up, down, in and out. Now the distribution to 15 strikes, seven balls. Sofia Mancini now up for Team Italy. I mean, can, can you imagine a team here dedicating themselves to practice at 5 a.m. and 2 p.m.? Two you, times a day, every day? Do you mean day? in the States? Yeah, or? yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wow. Just, you don't really see it. Well, the NCAA forbids that, I think. <laughs> well, <laughs> not in college, <laughs> but young, because there's so many athletes that want to get better and they say they don't have the time because they have school and homework and extracurricular activities but there's so much time before school that if you wake up early and even 30 minutes earlier and put time into your craft it can pay off now they do practice at 5 a.m and then go back and take a nap well right now because they don't have and school right now because they don't have school but <laughs> Trying to avoid some of that heat in the Philippines. Yeah. 
But it is something that you can do even when it's not the summer. You just have to stay committed, sacrifice yeah. a little bit, plan out your time. Two to count right now to Mancini. Count runs full. Again, Italy doing a good job of, for the most part, hanging off of that rise ball. Really making the hotel work more to bring that pitch further down. <laughs> count them five strikeouts in a row. And this is the second time in the World Series that she has struck out this side. You mentioned it. Athletes Unlimited. And she was in the booth with us yesterday. Yeah, had so much fun with her and Aaliyah Andrews. Another slapper. But, you know, Aaliyah plays outfield and then Sis plays infield. So you have a couple of speedy players that good with their short game. Have a little bit of pop, too. One's an innie and one's an outie. Love talking with them. And they were a lot of fun yesterday as Cheska Palmieri is going to lead off here. The Philippines almost sent nine to the plate in the first inning. She is the number nine hitter. Scored two runs. I feel like we haven't seen a lot of lefty slappers. There's a couple. Yeah, we haven't. And that's what Sis and Aaliyah were telling us yesterday is that they really started to develop their slap game more later on in their career when they got to high school. But... I, I have seen it when I was growing up that there would be somebody who batted left-handed or maybe even they batted right-handed and you turn them around on the left side because they have speed and tell them to slap knowing that that is one of the tools that somebody who has speed can use up in the box. So it used to happen, I feel like, at a younger age and now they're waiting to add it later. Strike comes in from Sofia De Pasquale. Do you think the game has dictated that, like the college game? Like, do we see more big hitters like Jocelyn Allo as opposed to... Yeah, the offenses have definitely gotten more powerful. And then, of course, the out-of-the-box rule that has affected slappers has greatly affected slappers of younger ages, too. <laughs> Palmieri, and the play is going to be made by Julia Calzolari at second. the fact that Calzolari was just headed that way. If she's a second baseman, a spectator watching that play, and then, oh, that's down the line, like that's just pretty far away from me, I'm just gonna watch her field it, then there's no way that she makes that play, but she's moving toward the ball, always having a place to be on defense. And that's something, Courtney, that doesn't go down in the scorebook. It just looks like a three, four view, I guess, is how you score that, I don't even know, but it doesn't go down the scorebook, but it's one of those important little details of the game that are so important. So top of the order, Chelsea Lobaton. And that one's going to get past Calzolori at second, and Lobaton is going to be safe. to go down as an error on Calzolari, who just made that great play. This time she has to move up toward the middle of the field. Gets a bad hop that's so tough to move toward the middle of the field and field a bouncy ball like that. And so it looks like we may have a change here for the Philippines. Remember, we do have everybody has to step up and have one at bat, so... It will be Jewel Bihar coming up to the plate now. Well, Baton does have speed. We saw her steal a base in the first inning, so Italy will have to keep an eye out on her. With Behar at the plate. And the corner is just crashing so hard, creeping up down the line, anticipating the bunt. 
Frascaroli, the first baseman, and Turchi, the third baseman now, will be able to back up a bit because there's two strikes on the hitter, but maybe still she tries to lay one down. Frascaroli is still playing a bit up the line. She shows it and pulls back, and the runner advances into scoring position. See if she still tries to lay down a bunt here. They're looking pretty committed to a sacrifice bunt. Showed bunt on that last pitch, too, even with two strikes. Just saw her eyes move to the third baseman to read her. They swing away here, but... Sometimes when a hitter has good barrel control and you trust them to lay down a bunt, maybe to make contact more than swinging away, you go ahead and give them the green line on a 0-2, 1-2 count, but if it goes foul, you're in trouble. <laughs> if it goes foul, you are in trouble. Well, Sofia Mancini tried to frame that up for her pitcher. Full count here to Bihar. And it's a strikeout, the second one today for Sofia De Pasquale. That's all she needed to do right there is throw strikes. When she's throwing strikes, she's having a lot of success in this game. Challenge Behar on that inner half. Got that strikeout. Up next is Chair Blancha. Got the first hit of the game in the first inning. Came around and scored too. is a Dodgers fan, also UCLA softball. Um, she'd like to visit Korea, according to her questionnaire she filled out for us. Oh, and they're going to go ahead and walk her? Yeah. So in Little League, you don't have to throw the pitches. You can't intentionally walk someone. So they put her on, that's two on, one in scoring position right now. As Kazea Valenzuela steps in. She also singled in the first. Another delay steal, we've seen that so much and even I saw it at the Southwest Regional, seen it a couple of times here, but players with speed will get a pretty big lead, wait for the catcher to throw the ball back to the pitcher and then take off for the next bag. Another stolen base for Lobaton. That's three today. And we're in the second inning. Runner going. Two in scoring position. Let's take you back to that delayed steal. So Lobaton got that big lead. Waited for the catcher to throw it back and then took off, noticing that nobody was covering third base. Well, good for her. I mean, recognizing the situation, also paying attention to her coaches. Yeah, and usually, too, that's a read that a player will do on their own. It's a, they usually have the green light to do it. Their coaches trust that they just notice what's going on and have a good read and go ahead and take off on their own because notice the trail runner wasn't doing the same thing back behind her. So that tells me that Lobaton took it upon herself to steal. Runners are safe. And Blancha gets back to second. Yeah, Blancha being a little too aggressive with that bunt being popped up in the air. Maybe she thought that. And that ball is not reading the runner out. So it's thinking, hey, ball's put in play. I'm out of what. But Lobaton, knowing the situation, seeing where that ball ended up, decided to stay put. That's a hit for Valenzuela, and back to the pitcher we go, J.C. Pohotal. 
reached on a fielder's choice in the first. Sophia De Pasquale needs to be able to step up again. Remember, we saw her getting a bases loaded jam. She fell behind 3 0 in the last inning and she was able to get the strikeout. So, a similar situation here bases loaded, two outs, falls behind this hitter. Can she do it again? Will she throw three straight strikes in a row to get that strikeout again? Going for the drama. That's it right there. And the coaching staff said about Sophia that when she plays, she feels like she was in a bubble and doesn't hear anything but her teammates supporting her. She needs that right now. You're in a bubble in the circle in your mind, slowing down your thoughts and your heartbeat. Had to go one pitch at a time. This one's a slow roller. And they get the play at home. Great choice, Courtney, by Sophia De Pesquale because you think, well, first base, there's two outs. That's a collegiate career. Continuing to still play professionally. And played in the Olympics as well. Yeah, a lot of these Team Italy players listed her as their favorite player, somebody to look up to. It's so cool that we had that chance to watch softball back in the Olympics in Tokyo. So sad that we won't have it in Paris 2024, but just think about the impact that these girls got to see, you know, softball on that stage and see what's possible for them someday, well, especially for Italy to make yes. it as well. And now Mike Andrea, the former coach of Arizona, is working with the Italian national team. My advisor to them. It's a big get. I think Stefano Cinci, the manager for Italy, said he would love to meet Coach Andrea someday just to pick his brain about softball. Big high hit there. Out to center field and the grab made by Audrey Matangrong. Such good teamwork out on defense and every aspect of the game by this Philippines team. You can tell they are a tight-knit team. And Tong Rong with the, the catch. Brings us to the pitcher, Sofia De Pasquale. First time that she is up facing her counterpart, JC Pahotal. She's a big Oklahoma softball fan. Wants to be a doctor, enjoys um, Harry Potter. Ooh, her special talent though, Amanda. Tell me, cooking. Ooh, I bet she can cook some good Italian food. Or maybe maybe Italian's not her thing. Do you but. remember uh, Stefano Cinci, their manager, told us, I don't eat Italian food anywhere but Italy. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> as you should. You should not do that. that you should only eat it in <laughs> Yeah, there are things that make sense and that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> you know, what's so great too about that catch that Matalrong just had out there in center field is how much the wind is blowing. I just looked up at the flags and right field and center field and since the beginning of the game, the wind has really picked up. JC Pahotal issues a walk. First one today, fourth one for the tournament. Next up for Europe, Africa is the right for the seven, Victoria Monti. Victoria Monti, the number nine hitter for Team Italy. Oh. 
Scoring points. <laughs> Tag made. And it's oh. it two. Yes! I got so excited. I'm sorry, Cody, because I saw <laughs> that play happen because JC Pohotal could have easily let this bunt roll foul, but she read the situation, knew that she could get this ball before it goes foul, tag Monty, who just laid it down, and then throw to the De Pasquale to get her out at second. Double play for the Philippines. For the Philippines, I mean, last night it was loud over there. There is a local group that has ties to the Philippines of Philippine descent and they have really just latched on to this team. Really cool to see the support. They made t-shirts and they cheer really hard, but just all connected and they're Filipino. I mean, like the signs that they made are just so well done. I think it looks beautiful. All wearing that blue with their t-shirts. They also cook them Filipino food, including rice, of course, yes, because, because rice, rice is life. Is life. Grounder hops around, Torchy at third, and then Blueberto gets tripped up at short, and a runner on to start for the Philippines. It's Hezekiah Cuerda. Philippines have been very aggressive up at the plate. Puerto reaches on the E5. Another substitution coming as Erica Pachon will step into the seventh spot. Number seven, Erica Pachon. Philippines has left the bases loaded the last two innings. They've had some chances to add to the score, and now Sofia Mancini behind the plate. She is aware of those runners right now. They've stolen a handful of bases. And the corners are right in the face of passion. Moved up in the box, expecting for her to bunt again, and Frascaroli and Turchi just right Ready to charge. Three balls to Pachon. Ball four. So an error and a walk allows the Philippines to get two runners on the first two batters in this inning. Reach. You know, the format a little bit different this year for the Little League Softball World Series. They're divided into two brackets, the purple and the orange bracket. We're playing in the purple bracket right now. And the winner of each bracket will play in the championship on Monday night. So it's different than in years past where they did pool play. <laughs> Philippines, if they win, they'll stay in the winner's portion of the bracket and play Friday at 4 Eastern on ESPN2. They would get Maryland in that game. Here's how our bracket shapes up right now. This is the purple bracket. Maryland advanced. How about that game? That was intense. Mm. Seven innings. Walk-off hit from Kinsley Rain, an RBI single in the seventh to win it for Maryland. Also, Macy Rickards with 18 strikeouts in that game. <laughs> Insane number. We've had some big pitching performances in the past couple of games. Games have been tight.
for the Philippines. And we'll have a visit out to the circle for Team Italy from Stefano Cenci. Pitching change is coming, and it looks like we're going to see Sofia Cenci. Defense, but has a chance to work out of it right now with two runners on. So the first batter she will face from the Philippines is a pinch hitter stepping up the, to the plate. Jonah Mungkal with two on. Runners reached by an error and a walk to start this third inning for the Philippines. Both of their runs coming in the first inning. Sophia Chenchi just coming in and throwing strikes exactly what she needed to do. A little confusion on the count, just trying to figure out was that strike three, was it strike two? No, strike three. Chenchi throwing with some good velocity though. Most important thing that you can do as a pitcher, I know it sounds cliche, but it's just to throw strikes. Find the strike zone, go right at a hitter, especially that first pitch strike, so important to establish it. And we'll have another substitution here for the Philippines. Jean Estrada. Yeah, that's got to be a confidence boost for Sophia Chinchi in the circle to come in and start off with a strikeout. She's been paying attention to what's been happening out there while she's waiting her turn. Her father, the manager, Stefano. He told us the key for her to stay even emotionally. I think that might be the same for every pitcher at this level. Every person, I think. Yeah, <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> but rolls foul. Philippines just continuing to try to use that short game time and time again. We've seen four or five different players square around and bunt. Some good bunt situations, some have been just been trying to get on. Ball gets away from Mancini behind the plate. Two in scoring position now for the Philippines. Runners advance on the passed ball. made by Sophia Chenchi at home to avoid another run scoring. Such a big play. This game is only two to nothing. Although with the amount of traction that the Philippines keeps getting on the base pass, it feels like they have a bigger lead than that. They need Chenchi to come up, get the strikeout, and then be determined to get this out right here. I think if Cuerta would have started her slide earlier, it would have been a lower tag that Chinchi would have had to go down for and possibly her foot could have beaten the tag, but she stayed more upright, made herself an easier out for the second out. So at third right now as and roll second for three. Scarborough back with you. What do you think about these young pitchers that we've seen? Loving it. And I feel like this is a really pitching heavy Little League Softball World Series. Maybe the most pitching heavy one that we've seen in a long time. These pitchers are stepping up, throwing strikes, working both sides of the plate. They look so good. Yeah, we're definitely not mad about that fact for <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, this Philippines team, we saw them have the great performance last night in the circle. Do you feel like their bats are kind of catching up today? I think that they're playing really loose up at the plate, out on defense, in the circle. This is a Philippines team that you get to love playing with each other and they're
playing with a lot of confidence right now. Yeah, and JC Pahodal has been great in the circle still. What do you want to see from Italy to kind of get to her a little bit more? Just continue to be aggressive up at the plate. The more that they see her, the better that they're going to have a chance of getting a hit off of her, seeing her spin, understanding what she's trying to do, and get their timing up against her. I feel like overall they've done a good job of not chasing too much of her high fastball pitches that have been out of the zone. Continue to do that, stick with that game plan, and good results will come. JC Pahotal, you see her line. I'm going to pull the mat check and not say what's happening. Oh, don't do it. No, but you can read. Struck out five today so far. Five all in a row, by the way, over the first and second innings. Well, and she just throws a lot of strikes. In last night's game, she threw 89 pitches. 59 of those 89 pitches were strikes. 30 of those 59 were swing and misses. Wow. Now Canada had a really hard time. Could not make the adjustment against JC Pahotal. Top of the order for Italy in the fourth inning. Second time up for Blueberto, the shortstop. We really enjoy talking with Blueberto on Zoom before they even, they weren't here, right? When we talked to them, it no, seemed like were, so long ago. They yeah. were still in Italy. I know that too, because it was daytime when we were talking to them and it was dark behind her okay. <laughs> <laughs> in <Yeah>. the window. <laughs> Seems like so long ago and we talked to you, all 12 teams, so. But you can tell she loves the game. She just a joy to be around. Very good teammate. She's very focused. I love to. We asked her about a key moment for this team, and she said when they were playing in regionals in the Netherlands, they got down, and they just continued to bring the energy. And that was really important to keep cheering each other on. She said that made a really big difference. Actually has some family in Dallas, Texas that'll be watching. So she had been to America a couple times. Yeah, especially now, second time through the order for Italy. They have a chance right now only down by two runs, which the Philippines have left quite a few runners on base. So the score could be a lot different than what it is right now. But Philippines unable to push more lines across a little <laughs> another strikeout <laughs> for the hotel. That's her sixth. You'll notice the pitch location of this strikeout. A little bit more up in the zone. Again, low baton wanting that pitch to be more up in the zone. And that's what is really that I'm noticing about her is that Italy maybe is not chasing the pitch at their eyes. So she's able to bring it down maybe to their letters or to their shoulders and then being able to get a swing and miss or maybe bring it down a little bit more and get a called strike that's more up in the zone. And Pahotal has only allowed two hits in nine innings in this World Series so far. And, and Amanda, you were talking about the numbers that the Philippines have left on base as Italy tries to catch up here. They've left seven on. They've left the bases loaded twice, so. And just three innings, offensive yeah. innings for right. them. Martina Canali, pinch hitter here for Italy. Every player must have at least one at bat. back to Pahotal and slowed down. I mean, it's just no problem for her. She just is like, has cat-like reflexes <laughs> out of the circle. She makes a pitch, is able to get a good read on how the barrel is going to connect with the ball and know where the ball is going to be hit. And that's, I mean, you don't actually talk a lot about, co even in the, the college games, is is that ability of a pitcher to see where the ball is going, read the swing, see the connection, and be able to field your position. It's just next level athleticism that the hotel has been showing us. Yeah, very impressed with her all around game. 
she gets ready to face Katarina Torchi for the second time. Struck her out in the first inning. Going back to, to last night's game, too, she was kind of like the leadoff hitter for the good pitching performances and the double-digit strikeout performances last night. But, I mean, this has to be one of the best Philippines team that they have brought and to make it to the Little League Softball World Series. And maybe last night with her 11 strikeouts and complete game shutout. Safe for Torchy. It's a good read by Turchi to not bunt it down the first baseline. That has been overplayed, and Pahotal has stepped up to the challenge every time. So this time, she bunts it more toward the third base side, and Pahotal is there again. I mean, she is right there. She would have fielded that cleanly. She would have been able to get the out at first base. That is a tough play to her backhand side, and because of that bobble, Turchi's safe. That is a base hit, though, so there goes the no-hitter for Pahotal. She carried it into this fourth inning. We saw Zanaria Hughes carry a perfect game into the fifth inning earlier today. It's a pretty exciting way to start day two of the tournament. <laughs> she looked awesome. And we'll have four games for you every day through Friday. Most of them here on ESPN Plus will move over to your TV Friday at 4 on ESPN 2. Championship Monday night on ESPN. And you know, Courtney, this is a, an Italian team that knows how to come together. In order to get here, one of the key moments of this team was in the tournament in Italy, their first pool play game, they lost Lombardi. And after that, it was like, okay, no more. They came out, came together. This is a team that, that knows how to fight back. Yeah, close-knit group. They've been together since April. They had a tryout, 30 girls tried out for this team, all from different club teams. The same Little League, too. The Emilia Romagna Little League went to the Baseball Little League World Series back in 2019. Second straight time that we've had, remember the last time we had international teams was in 2019. And it was also a team from Italy representing Europe, Africa. Did not have the Little League World Series in 2020, and then only domestic teams in 2021, those teams for America. Full count to Fatinati. And she'll walk. There's Fantinati's mom watching in the stands. She is aboard as Italy's trying to make this comeback. Really big situation right now for Italy to, for Fentinati to be able to take that walk. Two runners on, just down by two, still in the middle of your order right here. Really cool to get to see Fentinati's mom, Sylvia. There were several players that their families made the trip. I think Blue told us there were 17 parents making the trip, eight families represented. And yeah, maybe some watch parties going on back home, too, in Italy. But the food's way better than any watch party here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making a substitution again for Team Italy, Alyssa Piovani. This is where you really start to feel how all those runners left on base can make an impact in this game. And Palmera in left field, you can barely see her. She's up against the wall, basically heels on the warning track, respecting the power. 
of Piovani. I mean, she's so far out there that she almost blends in with the fence. This is Alyssa Piovani's mom watching on. Yeah, get that photo. Maybe Alyssa is looking out to left field. Best part, though, as an outfielder, if you are playing that far back, you know that if anything looks like it's in front of you, all you have to do is just run straight. You don't have to think, should I go back? This, no, you just go straight in and run as hard as you can to keep that ball from finding the hole. Strike two. Two runners aboard for Italy. The tying run at first. Strike out. JC Pahotal doing what she does best, just striking out batters. She does it again. She does not get nervous. Runner in scoring position, two on, and she gets you know, a mile or two, maybe even go to the same school as yeah. some of your teammates. I mean, that aspect, you don't, I never really got until, um, I mean, I played league ball, but to feel like you're going to school with them. I didn't go to school with anybody that I'd ever played with until I got to high school, and I thought that was really cool. That's super cool. You can develop those friendships, that chemistry. Definitely memories. I think they're going to have memories of coming to the World Series for a very long time. They, they do it right, Little League does, with making these girls feel like they've accomplished something special because they have. Obviously, they get the uniforms, they get the gear. There's parades. There's different opportunities for them to meet other teams. This is Chelsea Lobaton, the top of the order for the Philippines for the third time today. Well, and, and for this Philippines team, this is the entire team's first time to come to America, to maybe even ride on a plane yes. before. And it was quite the journey for them to get here. It took about a day and a half. Chenshi doing everything she can to get that ball over to first. That was a big time hustle. I will tell you what, from the minute that Chen Shi came into this game, she has said, no more. I'm stopping the bleeding. She got the strikeout. She got the out at home. And then she was able to make that play right there. Because Courtney, it's so easy to give in in this sport. It's easy for you to throw it past the catcher's head. You know there's a runner up there and like, oh, they're going to score. I'm just not going to try very hard because bummer, they're going to score. Or that ball got away from her and she just gives up on the play. But that's that next level of athleticism is that you say, no, I can do this. I'm strong enough to get the out. I'm strong enough to finish the play. I'm strong enough to throw strikes to get the strikeout right here. And you feel that with Chen Chi in the circle. I will say that Audrey Matangrong did go. Two, two count. Audrey reached on an error in the first inning that allowed a runner to come home. Before that awesome play by Chinchi Court, we were talking about the Philippines and their experience here. And we had a chance to talk to one of the Little League marketing representatives before the game. And she was talking about being able to observe the, the Philippines team participate in all these extra activities that come along with being a part of the World Series. And every time that she's seen them, she's seen emotion from them as Maturong walks of just crying, of just not even believing that they're able to experience everything that they're getting to be a part of. And it's just the type of thing that gives you goosebumps. And it's just incredible, incredible experiences and memories made. Yeah, you just love, like, you think about, yeah, it's a softball game, but it's way more than that. Chair Blancha. Reached in both of her times to the plate, a single and a walk. Has a run scored, too. 
Runner going. Audrey didn't even have to slide, got there in time. I will say, as much as the Philippines team, you know, does all the little things right, I do think that they need a little sliding lesson. Maybe yeah. bring out a slip and slide, you know, douse it with some water and just work on some sliding. Because I've seen a lot of late slides or no, this close, no slides. <laughs> in between slides and you know what that can do is not only get you out it can get you hurt you don't want to get hurt because you slide too late you jam a foot ankle knee but your back it's a two two count right now to blancha Big second base bag. It's almost bigger than Audrey <laughs> out there at second base. <laughs> Audrey had a duck over the hot shot from Blancha. Trying to come home. A run scores again for the Philippines. What That's a productive day for Chair Blancha. And stolen bases continue to pay off for the Philippines, getting that runner to second base into scoring position. And Blancha has hit the ball so hard. Three quality at bats for her in this game. The first time that the Philippines have scored in an inning other than the first inning is right now. Only scored one run last night on a couple of hits. And today, three runs on four hits. As Valenzuela steps in, runner going. Italy ready for it, but it gets past the shortstop. Blancha safe at second. I really hope she's okay. We were just talking about them sliding. She's jumping around, but it looked like her cleat got caught in the dirt as she was going in. Gives two thumbs up. Hard to see there because the empire right oh yeah the back of her cleat the heel of her cleat got stuck and the ground and that caused her leg to jam really hope she's okay she gave a double thumbs up to her coach a really interesting moment there amanda italy the players called all of them in including the outfield into the circle to have a quick conversation. A fast one hit at Calzolari at second. I think you, you notice that Italy in this game has really understood and felt the times where their defense just feels a little bit off and out of sync. We've seen that within this inning. Not throwing to the right base, even a little bobble of the ball there. That was well hit, hit very hard. It's always good to see, though, a team come together and understanding that, hey, it's getting late in this game. We just gave up another run, but we're only down by three. Let's keep the score where it's at. JC Pahotal is going to try to do the opposite of that. A very wild pitch coming in. Make it 4 nothing Philippines. One one count to JC Pahotal as the run scores on the wild pitch. Blancho was the one that scored that. Her and Valenzuela have all four of the Philippines hits. This one to Blue Berto. And JC Pahotal is safe. 
Yeah, so in college, you play with metal cleats, spikes that can dig into the ground so that this ball hits a blue bear toe. If she's wearing metal cleats because she, her, all of her weight is going toward third base right there, she doesn't slide. Her foot sticks into the ground and then she's able to bring that energy from the ground through her throw to make that long throw to first base. Good athleticism for her to get to that ball, but unable to make that throw. That will be a hit for Pahotal. Looking for another stolen base. That'd be seven stolen bases now for the Philippines. Now every time I think they're all holding their breath because they're not great at sliding. And now then you become scared to slide and then when you're tentative, that's sometimes when a collision can happen or you decide too late. And Manalo back up at the plate, she's re-entered. Had a sack fly to score a run in the first inning. Back to the pitcher, Chen Shi. And takes her time, making the throw to first to get the out. Two more runs at semifinals. The loser will play again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. against Missouri. That will be an elimination game. We are in the double elimination portion of the bracket they call it phase one and you can really tell with the phase one and, and phase two and the difference of the the scheduling that every game that every game matters even more every game is more emotional than what we're used to seeing in the past when there was pool play yeah pool play i think you were guaranteed five games and you would kind of play like a round robin and then the teams with the best record would move on to the quarterfinals. Well, now you're only guaranteed two games because they expanded to 12 teams. They added two more teams from the United States. And so the bracket had to change. So Elena Bonserio will lead off here for Italy down four. In the top of the fifth, remember in Little League, we play six innings. It's got to feel good for Pahotal and the defense of the Philippines to go out there with a four-run lead. Played with a one-run lead the entire game last night. That makes you feel <laughs> nervous and anxious trying to hold on to that one-run lead and keep it. And then even today, you know, playing with just a two-run lead for three innings. It's two extra runs make you feel more comfortable. It's been such a hot day. First time, too, that J.C. Pahotal has pitched in the sun because they were the late game last night, but I don't think it matters. She's okay with the heat. Not phasing her at all. Eight strikeouts today. She had 11 last night. Ah, the telephone. I can't do the voice like Matt Schick. Nobody can. I like that it's red, though. There's a sense of urgency <laughs> there. They could have <laughs> just picked any phone, and they went with a red one. Elisa Casadio is the pinch hitter. Italy picked up its only hit in the fourth inning. They've walked twice today. Yeah, down movement. I know that the coaches just told us that she throws a drop ball, but and maybe, excuse me, that she just throws a fastball, but that pitch right there looked like a drop ball. It fell off the table, and then those pitches that are more up in the zone looks like a rise ball. I mean, these pitches are spinning. They're moving a bit. She's pitching with good velocity. We're pausing for a shoe tying moment here. Do you do the two loops into a bow or are you a one looper? One looper. Yeah. I think I learned with the two loops after I graduated from the Velcro shoes. 
That's that down movement, though, I'm talking about. Right yeah. at the knees, looks like a drop ball that just falls off the table. When you're able to move the ball up and down in the zone, you are so hard to hit. Lobaton is setting up more up in the zone, and that was up a little bit, but not exactly where Lobaton wanted it. But JC, another strikeout. Could this be four games in a row with double-digit strikeouts? I mean, let's try it. JC's up for it, apparently. Three strikeouts in a row going back to the fourth inning, all looking. Yeah, the hitters that have come in off of the bench haven't been very aggressive. Those or where those looking strikeouts have come from. This is the pitcher, Sophia Chenchi, her first A-B. seen JC throw a changeup at all. Well, apparently she only has a fastball. Just a fastball. But she could have a drop ball and a right <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Ball four. Third walk today by JC. Will Italy be able to capitalize this time? We'll see if Vittori, Vittoria Monti can help out her pitcher and her teammate who's over on first base right now. Takes the first pitch over to first. Oh, and she had to hit the gas on that one. And Manalo looked and nobody was on first. Some tough defense from the Philippines. Still no score by Italy. That's a 16-hour flight. Flew from New York to Charlotte, and then they got on a bus from Charlotte to Greenville. And you know buses, it takes way longer to get anywhere. So it was a five-hour bus ride to get here to the Little League Softball World Series. Easy travel. 8,700 miles, almost 9,000 miles away. Not kilometers, Not miles. Not kilometers, <laughs> yeah. We had a little uh, Google incident. But if you want to know how many kilometers it is, it's over 17,000 kilometers. So there's that. There's that. Amanda Scarborough, ladies and gentlemen, with the kilometers. What's the furthest flight you've ever been on? Um, probably to Greece. How long? I think it was 10 hours. Okay. Well, coming back. Going there is always faster, I feel like. Right. The, you got a tailwind pushing you. What about you? <laughs> um, Houston to Sydney. Oh, it was like direct 18 or 19. Yeah. Who knew there was such a need for a flight from Houston <laughs> to Sydney, Australia? I know. Princess Ablig trying to beat out the throat. I just love to say her name. I know you do. Yeah. It's a great name. Great name. Next up, the second baseman with the three, Angela Escarita. I might be lying. It might have been from San Francisco and or L.A. <laughs> now, now I'm going really? to United and need to check this out. But. You were on the flight, though. <laughs> I was on the flight. <laughs> Angela Esparita. And the strike comes in from Sofia Chinchi. And Shinchi has thrown strike. She's been really good. And she's definitely made a big impact on this game whenever she entered. Brought a different energy. Yeah, okay, so you do have to stop. But either way, it was like 18 or 19 hours from LA. Straight to the airline <laughs> website. <laughs> I just wanted to see. It I was just remember. so long, you blocked it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Strike out for Sophia Chenji. That's her second today. And I think, too, if Italy is unable to come back 
and win this game. She will be one of the highlights and big takeaways to bring into their next game. But they can rely on her, that she got some experience at this Little League World Series level and feel. And looked good, looked pretty at home for the most part. Jessica Palmieri, the number nine hitter. You know, you might think too, oh, well, the Philippines played yesterday, so they had a chance to get comfortable. I don't think they ever looked uncomfortable yesterday on this field. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that they did either. Of course, JC was in control, so didn't get tested a ton defensively, but maybe offensively they're a little bit tight, yeah. but maybe that was because Stranahan, the pitcher for Canada, did such a good job that it made them look a little bit tight, more nervous at the plate. Yeah, Ellis Stranahan had a really nice game for Canada. Remember, that was just a one-run game, and the Philippines' lone run scored on an error. Good one coming up next, too, that if you're watching softball all day, you're going to want to stick around and see. Oh, I'm very excited about the next one. Drop third strike. They make the tag on Palmera. Another strikeout for Sofia Chenchi. Time for Italy to grab the bats. The Little Not League yet. Softball World Series. Not yet. Maybe someday. Nine <laughs> strikeouts for Jay Supa Hotel. She had 11 last night. And as Amanda said, one more, and she'd be the third pitcher today to have double-figure strikeouts. And she started the trend last night. She said, guys, level up. <laughs> <laughs> Pitchers have been really good today. Blue Verto with the bunt. Back to Pajoto. We jinxed oh. out. That we were just talking about their sharp defense and the hotel made that play and made the throw, but Manalo dropped the ball. Did a good job again, fielding her position, getting her feet in a good position to make that throw, but clearly dropping the ball and then trying to pick it up quick. But Italy with a little bit of life here late in the game. It's an error at first. Oh man, Ablig was going for that one in foul territory. She hasn't gotten much action over there, Ablig. So I'm sure yeah. she's any ball that comes her way, she's going to go all out for Ooh, it, trying yeah. to make a play. This is the last chance for Italy. We play six innings in Little League. And you know, the purple bracket, which is a part of the game that we're seeing right now, has had really good defense and pitching. Only 12 runs have been scored in four games for the purple bracket. Meanwhile, the orange bracket has 30 runs scored. Really interesting how that shapes up. Runner going again. And Blueberto into scoring position. Thought she was going there on the last play, but it was a foul ball, so she had to come back. Surprised to see the aggressiveness from Italy just down to three outs and usually you don't want to be too aggressive because even though Berto got in there pretty safely you just never know they don't every out is precious right now down by four runs well, Julia Calzolari still working hard at the plate right now fouls off another pitch from the hotel and that's the first stolen base for Italy today meanwhile the Philippines has seven Like what the coaching staff said about Kauzalari, she expects she expects to give or do anything in her power for the team to help the team.
2-2 to Calzolari. Put together a good at bat. Fallon off some pitches here and making the hotel work. This will be the ninth pitch of this at bat. For Italy, of course, you want to win this game. You want to win every game. But when you're being shut out, you're down by four runs. Even a little success is scoring runs. Back to Pahotal. Gets the runner at first. Bluberto is over at third. Another good play by Pahotal, knowing exactly what she wants to do. Her job right there is not to be distracted by Bluberto. It's just to get an out. So even though she saw Berto breaking for third base, she said, nope, I'm just going to go to first, get one out, because that out is a sure out. So that brings up Katarina Torchi, and she has the only hit for Italy today. It came in the fourth inning, the last time she was up at the plate. And the hotel pretty even and consistent with her pitch count. Last night she had 89 pitches, today she's right at 86. And here we are in the last inning, just a couple outs away from another win if she can pull it off. A few more balls today. Just a couple. Chance for Blue Berto to come home as the ball gets away from the Philippines and Italy has their first run across. <laughs> Breaking up the shutout in Blue Berto, so excited that she just tried to help her team manufacture that run, put the ball in play, forced the Philippines to commit an error, stole a base, took an extra base, and then able to come around and score. She was so excited too. And honestly, if, if you're Philippines, I think you just play it safe. I don't think you make that throw to third base. Just go have all your focus put on this hitter right here. Because now all of a sudden, the Philippines have two errors and one inning, and we were just bragging on their defense. Yeah, the one that put blue on, and then the one that just scored her. a web gem right there. What a grab at second base from Angela Esperita. Love that Angela stayed on her feet for this. She stayed with, she stayed with it, read it off the bat, got such a good break, and then her glove just followed the ball down. It was like a drop ball, but her glove just continued to follow the ball down to the ground, and she just grabbed it right before it hit the ground. What a play for the second out. Italy down to its final out here, and they will bring Martina Fantanati to the plate, who walked in the fourth inning the last time up. And they're asking her to remove the towel from her back pocket. And here we go. Fantanati trying to extend this game for Italy. at bats his third time through for Italy putting the ball in play no strikeouts in this inning they've had at least one strikeout actually they've had at least two strikeouts and all but the, the third inning in this one two balls come in from JC Pahotal so hot out there too I mean these players just are taking it in stride and don't even really look that hot I noticed that in my regional, too, in Waco, Texas, where the temperatures, it was actually even hotter than it, what it is here by a few degrees. But the players are just using adrenaline. They're playing through it, not focused on it, playing the game they love. Three balls and a strike to Fantanati. Not thinking about the heat right now. Just thinking about what pitch is coming next. Feels like 103. 
full count. An opportunity to get that elusive 10th strikeout to make it another double digit strikeout performance. She does it! 10 Ks for JC Pahoto! And the Philippines are moving on to the purple bracket semifinal on Friday. JC Pahotal looks so sharp all throughout this game, still moving that fastball with a little bit of rise ball action to it, up through the zone all throughout this game, even using a little bit of drop action too. 10 strikeouts, only gave up one hit. JC Pahotal, another win, another complete game win in the World Series. How impressive has she been? 10 strikeouts today, 11 strikeouts last night. And here is how the purple bracket is shaping up on the winner's side. The Philippines advancing to take on Maryland in the purple bracket semifinal on Friday at 4 Eastern. We will see Team Italy again tomorrow.